highlights presented in this report are part of the expanding activity in research, testing, and operational development of the ATLAS program. The center of production and integration for ATLAS will be the new astronautic site in San Diego. The man who has coordinated this center's construction has been Mr. George Robertson, assistant to the division manager. Now that the buildings are shaping up, it is easier for us to see the overall design objectives. We've tried to give our engineering people some windows with some light and air, and we have limited the size of the buildings so that it's impossible for us to get into the situation of the bullpen engineering areas that have been prevalent since World War II. In back of the six-story buildings, is a one-story engineering building built on the ground principally to facilitate the handling of heavy equipment. It, too, has been made with light wells inside to permit the use of daylight as much as possible. The high bay area has a clear span of 180 feet. The height to the lower cord of the trusses for this part of the building is 42 feet. It might be of interest to you to know the special, some of the special techniques that were used in the construction of this plant. For example, in the manufacturing building, helicopters were used to hoist the heating and ventilating equipment onto the roof. This was done at a considerable saving in time and money. There were 103 tons of equipment lifted onto the roof in less than six hours. The helicopter made in excess of 70 quarter mile round trips in hoisting this equipment up. The principal advantages, of course, were that it was not necessary to plank or reinforce across the roof and the equipment was placed exactly where it was to be finally positioned. But last weekend, we started moving personnel into the plant, into their permanent location. We plan to continue our move with the greatest continuity possible through the completion of the factory building which is now scheduled for some time in June. On June 24th, Convair Astronautics made local history with the move of the hydrostatic test tower from plant one to the new site. The tower, 34 feet square, 80 feet long, was the largest to ever be transported in this area. Arrival was on June 27th, near the end of the quarter. Raising of this structure into position coincided with the shift of major tank fabrication to the new plant. Component and system testing forms a vital link between design and production. Here, the C-series liquid oxygen tank bulkhead undergoes a burst test. Liquid nitrogen is substituted for liquid oxygen, and the tank is pressurized to its limits. The amount of burst pressure is recorded, and the resultant damage is examined to find flaws, if any, in construction. The first integrated propulsion and component tests on the complete Atlas missiles are made at Sycamore Canyon, just northeast of the new plant. The last firing with 1B was run August 28th. Duration times were booster 100 seconds, sustainer 122 seconds, and vernier 124 seconds. Here, associate contractor and Air Force teams 
work closely in the integration of major systems. Vandenberg Air Force Base, the Corps of Engineers, was well along with construction of the first launch complex. Launcher A is nearest completion. Last of the A-series missiles is 16A. It arrived at Cape Canaveral on February 5th. Astronautics activities at the Air Force Missile Test Center are under the direction of Operations Manager B.G. McNabb. On July 1st, there were three Atlas missiles here at AFMTC in various stages of preparation. Four were delivered during the quarter. Between July 1st and September the 30th, the Atlas missiles were flight tested by our teams at AFMTC under the direction of our chief test conductor, Trav Malloy. 4B was launched. August 2nd at 5.16 p.m. Planned range was nautical miles. There were 17 primary objectives and 13 secondary objectives established for this test. Only one of the primary objectives was not completely satisfied. 4B successfully flew the planned trajectory with booster separation, sustainer vernier operation, and nose cone separation. Deviation from the planned impact point was within percent. Five B was launched from Complex 11 on the 28th of August at 11:30 p.m. There were 37 objectives established for this flight, and 34 were successfully achieved. The remaining three were accomplished in part. Plan range was nautical miles. Azusa data placed the nose cone guidance computer data placed impact the atlas launched this quarter was 8B. This missile was a refinement of former flight missiles with advanced objectives added to the test plan. 8B was launched from Complex 14, 24 minutes after midnight on the 14th of September. The pre-established range for this missile was nautical miles. Performance of guidance equipment on this flight was completely satisfactory. Total flight time was approximately 26 minutes. Impact information obtained from two sources indicated an actual impact point within one mile of the target. At two minutes after 6 p.m. on December 18, 1958, a team of Convair astronautics engineers and technicians placed into orbit around the Earth the majority of an Atlas missile. This is a model of the missile which was placed into orbit. The missile is the same as that used for military purposes. The missile is launched vertically and after a few minutes of flight the booster section, consisting of two engines and this thrust structure, is jettisoned, the remainder of the missile continuing on along a trajectory which places it into orbit. This is a model, an actual representation, of the part of the Atlas missile which was placed into orbit around the Earth. This is the only missile available at the present time, so far as we know is capable of placing itself into such an orbital trajectory. The one and a half stage technique which I just described is one of the reasons 
uh, for this being possible. The missile was placed into orbit using the guidance system, which was designed in order to provide the proper trajectory for use as a ballistic missile against surface targets. The launch procedure was very well conducted on this particular flight, as evidenced by the fact that the actual launch was only two minutes after the time scheduled many, many hours before. T minus five minutes. Mark. All communications switch to channel one. How's she look, Freddie? Three minutes, 50 seconds. Three minutes, three minutes. Smart. Dumping LN2, starting flight pressurization. How the tanks look, Jack? Look good. Five. 